start the webinar now uh, although our principal has tried a lot uh, to uh, come live but because of the network issue he could not uh, so i welcome you all uh, to this webinar on global health security and covid-19 uh, epidemic issues in perspective this is organized by uh, uh, Resource Council of North Lokenpur College Autonomous and Internal Quality Assurance Cell, IQAC, North Lokenpur College Autonomous. And uh, I'm very glad uh, that uh, four of our panelists have agreed readily without, uh, within a very short notice uh, to, uh, you know, provide their opinion on this very crucial issue. And uh, we would like to start uh, with this meeting by the welcome address given by our principal. So I'm going to play a, a short video that has been posted by him. Uh, just wait for a second. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Viman Sundra Setia, Chairman of Research Council and Principal of North Lakhimpur College Autonomous. Welcome you all to the first ever webinar organized by our institution titled Global Health Security and COVID-19 Epidemic Issues in Perspectives, organized in collaboration with IPC of our college. We all know that COVID-19, or popularly known as coronavirus, has been creating a serious concern for human beings. Almost all the nations of the world are suffering due to it. Therefore, there is a need to discuss more about in it details. I am glad to inform you all that our institution has taken initiatives to aware people of these issues since its inception. We believe Together we can fight this epidemic. So on behalf of organizing committee, I welcome the panelists and the participants to this webinar. Let us make this webinar a success. Thank you very much. Uh, India, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Pankaj Kumar Sharma. He is an assistant professor from KVV SAS University, Assam. Uh, we have amongst us Dr. Kostov uh, Deka. Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, Dibrugar University. Uh, we have amongst us Dr. Dipmoni Gogoi, MIT University, New Delhi. We have amongst us panelists uh, Dr. Yogen Bhutia, Assistant Professor from SRM University, Andhra Pradesh. And uh, we also have a good number of uh, participants from uh, our, our institute and also from other parts of Assam and India. I can see uh, some of my esteemed colleagues have also participated and my student friends. So I welcome you all uh, to this webinar, uh, which includes a very, very important issue, which all of us are going through. Uh, we saw, we see that, you know, uh, the entire world now uh, has been under this epidemic called COVID-19. And due to, due to this COVID-19, the entire global health uh, security situation was put in a very serious question. So we need to redress and understand what is the impact of this COVID-19 on uh, this global health security. So uh, um, we have called upon four panelists from the four different universities, as I have already introduced amongst uh, you all. They will be delivering their opinion on four important, uh, you know, I mean, uh, topic of this particular webinar. So first of all, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Pankas Kumar Horma to deliver his uh, space on the topic, uh, changing perspective of security from traditional uh, security to health security. So, uh, Pankaj, uh, are you are you live? Yeah. yeah so, Pankaj, uh, yeah. So, uh, come online, and I would like request you to uh, place your opinion in front of the audience. Over to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Yeah.
Uh, because uh, this, uh, this this pandemic situation, this health security, most the significance of this health security, uh, uh, very significant, and also highlighted by this Galton in his uh, analysis of global violence. You know, this Galton made a very glaring example. Of this, uh, significance of this health security and he made a kind of specific reference uh, uh, with the difference between and in a first disease like say for example he referred to tuberculosis so uh, when we are talking about earthquake though this earthquake the issues of earthquake is violent the degree of fear that has been that has been accentuated by, by this uh, tuberculosis is more than zero. Because gradually uh, it uh, increases the psychosis in the minds of human beings. As a result of which it's developed some sort of uh, develop some sort of uh, no fear psychosis in the minds of the human beings. So that is the crucial issues that highlighted by uh, this uh, Geltung's analysis of uh, uh, Hello? Hello, Pankas, yeah. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, yes we can hear you, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, this uh, this gathering is very significantly highlighted this uh, specific uh, significance of you know dangerousness of a kind of you know uh, this crisis the health hazards like this tuberculosis that created in the minds of the human being. So uh, we have to look in that way. So uh, I'd like to highlight one specific definitions that provided by World Health Organization on Health Security. It defined global public health security as the activities. And require both proactive and reactive to minimize vulnerability to acute public health events that endanger the collective health of population living across geographical regions and international boundaries. So uh, this World Health Organization's report 2007, they basically highlighted some specific, you know, diseases which created a lot of, you know, uh, vulnerabilities in the entire world. And they basically highlighted some emerging diseases like Ebola and Nipah, then H1N1, then avian influenza, then sudden you know, infectious diseases just like malaria and then AIDS, then some deliberate use of biological and chemical materials. Then they also highlighted some issues like violent conflicts, uh, humanitarian emergencies. Then again, they stressed on environmental saints and natural disasters. And lastly, they highlighted the issues of chemical accidents and radioactive danger. For example, uh, this dumping of petrochemical waste in West Africa, which led to several deaths in 2006. So uh, the world is in a very vulnerable situation. And as a, uh, and in present context, this uh, spread of coronavirus and this COVID-19, you know, uh, it uh, increases the vulnerabilities of the entire world, the whole humanity. It's a kind of you know, threat for the entire humanity. So in this critical situation, I'd like to highlight some psychological issues that may be confronted by the human being during time of this spread of COVID-19. And as a result of, you know, uh, this lockdown, you know, how human being may face a lot of trouble, may some mental issues as well. First one, that is separation from loved ones. You know, as a result of sudden lockdown, or as a result of this, you know, sudden outburst of this pandemic threat uh, like uh, this COVID-19, you know, uh, the, the entire world gets stuck. So somewhere down the line, if we refer, you know, the situation of some sort of migrant web workers, mm -hmm. you know, they're stuck in somewhere, you know, in, in some places and they cannot come to their own families as well. So that is some sort of you know, a mental issues may develop. 
that the loss of freedom. You know, uh, in this context, I'd like to refer, you know, the kind of situation that we will nowadays in the United States of America. People are coming out to protest against, you know, uh, because they don't want that kind of, you know, operations. You know? They cannot uh, reside themselves within, you know, their home. They, they, they always enjoy their freedom. Mm -hmm. And this freedom is an important essence of democracy. So it is very much important that how this liberal democratic forms of government tackle these pandemic situations. So it's a kind of you know, great threat for the whole humanity. So this liberal democratic government also have to take in care of these mental issues of this, you know, free individuals. Because we always enjoy, we, we love to enjoy this liberty, freedom. So in, in that way, from that point, psychological view, viewpoint, human being may face a lot of, you know, press and uncertainty often over the disease status. You know, there's a kind of increasing uncertainty in the minds of the people. You know, what, what will happen as a result of the deadly virus? There are a lot of uncertainty prevail and human being may face, you know, may, may travel in different way. So that is one kind of, you know, parameters. Then loss of communication from the physical and social world. That also created some sort of, you know, for, you know, from psychological viewpoint. Then stress, we have to manage the stress. Stress management is very much important. So as a result of this lockdown, as a result of the spread of coronavirus, you know, uh, we, 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 we may face a lot of trouble. Say, for example, we may face some sort of an economic, uh, you know, we, we may face some sort of economic loss. So how we can tackle that particular, you know, situation, that is more important. So need of the hour, you know, uh, to overcome this kind of the psychological problems, the human being, uh, I suggest, the human being must go for, you know, uh, uh, rigorous, uh, you know, uh, this meditations as well. They have to always think positively. There must be, you know, utmost positivity must be there. They must overcome, you know, all those problems. So, uh, so these are some sort of crucial issues that may be confronted by the human being as a spread of uh, uh, this uh, deadly virus in present day context. And you know, somewhere down the line, the kind of thinking that developed by this United under the parameter of United Nations in the post-colonial phenomena, that also uh, face a kind of serious setback in this you know 2020 as a result of this you know spread of this you know, deadly virus. We cannot categorize you know uh, the very dimensions of security, and we have to give more utmost importance on the health security because this health security is very much related the other dimension security of human beings. So uh, in this critical context, we have to uh, work together. And uh, in this context, this World Health Organization, this Global Malaria Program also initiated, they're leading a cross-partner effort to mitigate the negative impact of this coronavirus in malaria-affected countries and where uh, possible the countries towards a successful COVID-19 responses. So, uh, you know, this uh, World Health Organization initiated certain sort of programs with these all, the, all those, you know, malaria affected countries so that they can go for a positive way to overcome this particular crisis situation. For example, in the context of India, the India have supplied this lot of, you know, hydroxychloroquine to different countries to tackle this particular you know, pandemic situations. Mm -hmm. So in that way, um, you know, uh, at a national level as well as a global context, the nation state, and at the international level, the international community, you know, are working together. The need of the hour is that, you know, how human being, you know, uh, I mean, how human being face that particular pandemic situation, how human being can tackle that particular situation, that is more important. Maybe uh, after uh, six months or maybe after one year, you know, uh, if things happen positively, everything will be, you know, normalized. But in, this need of the hour is to tackle the situation, the, you know, the important issues of human being, how human being can able to tackle the situation. Otherwise, what happened? There may be kind of increasing restlessness. There may be a kind of increasing hysteria. There may be increasing kind of, you know, uh, mental propositions as well, psychological stress issues, maybe well, traumatic stress may develop. You know, there are different sorts of, uh, you know, threat perception may come into the forefront. And subsequently, uh, you know, the whole concept of security, may, uh, you know, may face a kind of, you know, uh, contestation. So we have to think uh, coherently so that by re rigorously re-examining this existing situation, uh, we can able to find out some sort of, you know, possible solution. So uh, 
this is my viewpoint uh, in in terms of you know uh, this sending perspective of security and how in present context uh, health security within the parameter of human security the one one of the important parameters of health security how this health security become more secure so uh, with this word i'd like to include thank you okay uh, thank you pankaj uh, that's a very interesting kind of a uh, opinion provided by you you have made a very important uh, perspective on this covid 19 specifically talking about this mental health situ health situation uh, no, you are mute yeah i think you are mute hello hello yeah can you hear me hello hello yeah we can hear you yeah. okay thank you pankaj uh, you have made a very important point on uh, your uh, speech you have talked about the mental health condition of the patients and the people who are facing this covid 19 and more particularly you have talked about the shifting paradigm of peer psychosis from a uh, traditional security perspective to this non traditional security where people are taking epidemics and pandemics are as more uh, concern for fear uh, you know which can create a situation of hysteria you know a kind of restlessness you are talking about so you uh, you have suggested for a positive attitude uh, you know uh, that to be adopted by the patients and also by the people so that they can overcome this kind of epidemic situation so we will take questions on you uh, if there is any questions by the participants or by the panelists also we will come at the, at the last part of the discussion we will make a discussion on it the next question uh, is uh, by one of my colleague uh, from department of philosophy dr bonali bora and this question is to more particularly to dr pankaj uh, sharma pankaj are you online yeah yeah so uh, uh, there's yeah. a uh, yeah there's a question there's a question to you uh, dr bonali bora she uh, wants to know like uh, she said that you know during this lockdown situation you know all of us are under some kind of a fear uh we are under fear psychosis you know we don't uh, don't want to go outside where well, we have a fear to go outside you know we we have a fear of uh, being die maybe we might got affected by covid 19 so there was a lots of you know a pressure uh, stress that is going on uh, on us so being as a common person how 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 to manage the stress uh, see want to know like how to manage the stress of being locked down inside our house what is your opinion Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, during uh, the time of our uh, discussion, we already talked about uh, to overcome this kind of you know stress kind of issues. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with a positive mindset, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you uh, develop a kind of you know a kind of an you know, optimistic bent of mind, mm -hmm. so if you go for a kind of uh, meditation kind of things. Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so that meditation so uh, will always uh, be helpful meditation in different way you can do it meditations but your uh, and that will increase your positivity mm. that, uh, because you know in the entire world uh, this uh, optimism must be there yeah? uh, with a very optimistic uh, bent of mind can only uh, be beneficial for enduring peace for a kind of enduring wow. peace and uh, regarding the question of this peace is very much interrelated with you know uh mental proposition mental condition as well as you know uh, the human mindset how human being uh, think positively so during this lockdown period since this is a very crucial situation so stress management is very much important and for that i personally feel uh, that uh, with a very optimistic bent of mind you can if you can go for this meditation or you can you know Uh, engage yourself some sort of you know uh, productive work productive work means you know it may be in different way it may be a kind of you know academic kind of things or you know other activities as well if you can continuously engage yourself in some sort of you know, productive activities with an optimistic bent of mind and and that will help you to you know uh, ignore the kind of negativity that we, you know uh, you know encompass you know within ourselves during this you know at times because there are a lot of informations come in different to it what will happen there are different sorts of assumptions you know there are some sort of you know, future assumptions also you know made by you know different surveys different you know uh, uh, tv reports and different different ways so uh, we have to uh, be very much positive we we need, need to ignore all those you know unnecessary informations and we need to engage ourselves with some sort of you know, productive work and i Uh, using the word productive work it's maybe your you know academic activities and your you know 
uh, you know, uh, other activities as well, which can give you some sort of peace. Mm. Peace within self is very much important. Peace within self and peace within others is very much important. So, uh, so if you can able to maintain a gap between peace within self and peace within others, you know, it will be beneficial for you. Because if you uh, continuously engage yourself with, you know, these medias, with these, you know, news, with some, you know, other you know, elements, you cannot, uh, you know, maintain that particular gap between peace within self and peace within others. So, uh, if you can continuously engage yourself with some positive work, you have to think your peace within self. And whenever you develop that particular self perspective, that, you know, that imagination, because peace is always in the mind, that will help you to think positively and can able, I, I do believe that you can able to overcome, you know, kind of stress you have during this particular end of dark time. So you have to rigorously think positively and, uh, you know, by developing that particular peace within self and others, that will be beneficial. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Pankaj. I hope uh, Dr. Dr. Bora has... Hmm. Yeah, thank you, Pankaj. So I hope uh, Dr. Bora has got your answer. Uh, I have a, a question to you, more particularly regarding since we have talked about the shifting paradigm from uh, traditional security to non-traditional security, more particularly to the health security. Uh, living in a country like India, uh, we have been seeing that uh, there are two sectors, uh, uh, health and uh, education, or you can say health and hygiene, are the two sectors, you know, uh, which have always been neglected somehow by the governments. And if you look at the budgetary allocations also, these are the two sectors where a less amount of money has been invested. And the governments are doing a very uh, less job in awaiting people how to maintain hygiene and sanitation, you know. Still, if you look at in some, I'm not generalizing, but if you look at in certain states, uh, the people do not have the habit of going to the toilets. They do not have a habit of building toilets uh, and they go to the open fields and farms, you know. So this kind of practice is still prevalent. So in, in a country like India where people are not concerned about uh, maintaining hygiene, maintaining sanitation. What should be the role of the state, you know, in, in, in giving more importance to the health security and hygiene? What is your opinion? Yes, you know, uh, for, yeah, I'd like to start with uh, this uh, space uh, in 1941 Atlantic Circle. You know, he uh, very glaring examples of this for freedom space, freedom from space and expression, freedom of religion, Freedom from fear and freedom from war. So, in this uh, uh, post World War scenario, in this hard old countries basically got freedom from speech and expression and freedom of religions, they don't got this freedom from fear and freedom from war. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this particular specific problem, this freedom from want and freedom from fear, in different circumstances, the people residing in hard old countries, you know, face a lot of trouble. And, you know, the government, uh, if you look at, you know, uh, the situation of the third world countries' government, specifically the countries like India, you know, their budgetary allocations are basically dependent upon their border regions. If you look at the Indian government budgetary allocation, that's always dictated. That is always, you know, control on the issues of, you know, indo China relations, mm -hmm. even Indo-Pakistan relations. That's why the Indian government compelled to invest more money in different sectors, in you know, in considered to be other sector. For example, in the new educational policy, you know, in the context of India, in the new educational policy invested 99,000 crores, approximately 1 lakh crore rupees, you know, rupees for this education sector, which is considered to be revolutionary in Indian education systems. Mm. At the same time, if you compare this amount with this Oxford University budget, the total amount of Oxford University budget is 3 lakh crore, only one university. For one university, the expenses three lakhs crores of rupees, which is equal to the total amount of you know education budget for the whole India. There, there we have different a lot of differences, gaps in mm -hmm. you know, developed countries and these developing countries. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, this health security is a very crucial issue. And regarding this health security, this UNDP has highlighted different issues and how you know uh, basic developed countries uh, measure cut of uh, causes of this uh, due to this infectious and parasitic disease. We still, you know, 17 million people annually in these you know, underdeveloped countries. And that may be as a result of health hygiene, so, you know, health hazards, different sorts of, you know, health-related issues. So, to overcome that kind of, you know, problems, the government of these third world countries need to work you know, significantly to develop a kind of, you know, uh, environment, you know. And also, at the same time, the people also have to develop a kind of civic culture in these third world countries. 
Yes. Mm. Because if you look at, say, for example, in uh, in the context of Assam in Gohati, we have uh, this ZMC, mm. Go Gohati Municipal Corporations. Mm. So they, they arrange different sorts of public toilets. But uh, at the same time, you know, uh, we, as a, as a you know, responsible citizens of a particular metropolitan city, the people also have to develop a kind of civic culture to use these public toilets very, you know, very well. You know, uh, so that kind of you know, civic culture is somewhere down the line is lacking on the part of this, you know, uh, 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 the startled countries. And in that context, we, we can relate with this kind of, you know, uh, parochial political culture kind of thing that we really in this, you know, other countries. So these things are very much interrelated. Uh, so we need to, you know, we need to think in that way. We need to develop a kind of coherent approach. There must be, there must be kind of discussion with the government as well as the policy makers, as well as the stakeholders, as well as the civil society organization. And at the most but specifically, the common people have to, you know, understood things. And can only, you know, these uh, public health mechanisms will become more beneficial. And, uh, you know, uh, in Tharul country, because in Tharul country, the health is a very crucial issue. You know, till today, you know, in this, uh, say, for example, the last couple of years, we have the provisions of, you know, uh, this health insurance. Mm. Isn't it? Because, you know, uh, the, the developing countries, you know, in countries, there is no issues of this health insurance because the government have, you know, allocated many more funds in health sector. Mm. But, but in the context of India, the health is a very, you know, uh, in the crucial issues. In, in the name of health, it's an every individual. Basically, you know, uh, this uh, lower middle class and middle middle class people have to expense a lot you know, in terms of you know mitigating all those health hazards. Mm -hmm. so these are some sort of glaring problems of these startled countries. We need to you know uh, work more rigorously, and government have to find uh, some sort of you know new policies so mm -hmm. that we can you know mitigate this sort of problem. Okay, thank you, uh, Pankaj. That's can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pankaj, for answering this question. This is indeed a very important scenario that we need to discuss because health and hygiene are the two areas where the government needs to uh, give more importance now, now because of this epidemic issue. And we hope that in the next coming coming couple of uh, days, the situation. Uh,